Well, today I thought I'd share with you the number one mistake that I made as a performing musician in my career. By the way, if you're new to this channel, I'm Brad Allen. I'm a professional musician based out of Kansas City, Missouri. So the number one mistake I made as a performing musician was spending most of my career performing music as a service. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it depends on what your goals are as a musician. You know, in the beginning, I just wanted to make a living. And so that seemed like the most direct way of making a living. You know, a lot of musicians play weddings, for instance, they play parties. And then again, there's nothing wrong with that, but it depends on what your goals are. I got to thinking about this recently because I did a whole series of concerts in public libraries. And then at the end of that series, I played a gig in a, basically in a restaurant. And I had, you know, reason to kind of compare the two. So for those library concerts, the people were actually coming out to hear the music. And specifically, they were coming out to hear jazz. At the restaurant, those people came because they wanted to eat. So most of them were not there to hear the music. And, you know, your biggest concern in that situation is not basically just not being too loud. You don't want to be in the way of their meal or of them talking while they're having their meal. So what I have found is that when people are actually coming to hear the music, Number one, it's much more rewarding than simply providing a service. You can actually make more potential money doing concerts than you can providing a service. If you're only providing a service, it's very easy for them to find someone else who can perform the same service. So you're easily replaceable. They might find someone who's cheaper, for instance. You know, there's kind of a ceiling to your income because there's always a mus another, there's plenty of musicians around who will do that service in your place. The other thing that I found over the years, I used to think when I was playing these restaurants, bars, things like that, that I was building a fan base, but I never really found that to be true for the most part, because most people, again, are not there to listen to the music. And even if they like the band, most people when they leave, won't even remember who you were. They might remember, boy, that, that was a really great band, but unless they actually ask, you know, the bartender, some, someone there, who the band was and write it down, they're probably not going to remember who you were anyway. I used to think it was a case of playing original music versus playing cover tunes. In other words, I thought, well, if you're playing original music, you're going to build a following or you're going to be able to do concerts. And there can be some truth to that. But for the most part, the situation is going to be the same regardless of whether you're doing covers or whether you're doing original music. You know, you can play cover tunes in certain types of bands. You know, there's, there are a lot of jazz bands around who do, for instance, jazz standards. We do a lot of jazz standards. And, but again, in a concert situation, people are coming out specifically because they want to hear jazz. And they might be coming out because they want to hear jazz that they're familiar with, like the standard tunes. So it's not necessarily just a case of whether or not you have something original, but rather that you have something specific that people are actually coming to hear. The other misconception that I had for a very long time is because we were playing jazz in these clubs, I thought that was the reason people didn't respond to us. You know, I thought if we were playing rock music or country or something that was more popular, that again, we would have more luck building a following, et cetera. But again, I, it, it didn't change the situation because that's not really what they were there for. I mean, I will say when you're playing in a random bar or a restaurant to a, to a random crowd, you're going to appeal to a wider group of people playing popular music than music that most people aren't familiar with. So there is some truth to that. But again, it doesn't take away the fact that they're not actually there to hear the music. Ultimately, what I found in my career that this actually started affecting the music itself because, you know, I wanted to, from the very beginning, I wanted to compose music. I wanted to write songs, which I've always done. But because you're not playing in situations where there's a big call for that, there's less and less motivation to do that. You know, why would you go in and play? It's not that they're, they're not going to like it or something, but they're not going to pay any attention. So you could be in there playing a fantastic tune that you wrote, but no one's listening anyway. So unless you're there to sort of rehearse the tune, uh, it's just kind of a waste of everyone's time. So what ended up happening is I ended up spending most of my career playing cover tunes 
for much less money than I probably could have. Another big misconception I had about this is I thought I couldn't do concerts until I had a following, until I had a fan base. But there are lots of concert series with built-in concerts, or excuse me, with built-in audiences. They will come to your shows because the shows are promoted in the series. So it could be, you know, a jazz series, could be a blues series, just depending on what your genre is. But again, it's not necessarily up to you to bring the audience because they already have an audience. So for all these reasons, if I could do it all over again, I would spend most of my time building my audience and doing concerts rather than spending most of my career trying to provide live music as a musical service. Just to let you know, I do a behind the music episode like this every week. It's completely free. Just follow the link in the video or in the comments below to receive the weekly episode. And I'll see you next time.